On the 25th of May, the public will get the chance to vote to either repeal or attain the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution, which currently bans abortion in the Republic, except in very limited circumstances. The amendment reads, The state acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and, with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother, guarantees in its laws to respect and, as far as practicable, by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. Those who want to repeal it say it needs to go as it is dangerous and unfair to women. Those on the pro-life side say it should be kept as it affords protections to the unborn which would not otherwise be guaranteed. This is an issue which has dominated Irish politics since the 1980s. But how did we get to the stage we're at now? I'm Sinead O'Carroll, news editor with thejournal.ie and here's a brief history of the Eighth Amendment. First, we're going to focus on the Eighth Amendment's origins. Back in 1981, the pro-life amendment campaign was set up by a range of Catholic and pro-life groups amid a backdrop of concern over potentially liberal abortion laws being introduced in Ireland. This was in the wake of Roe versus Wade, a landmark court case in the United States, which resulted in first trimester abortions being legalized. There was a genuine fear in Ireland that the courts could do something similar here unless a constitutional provision prohibiting abortion was introduced. The group pressed the main Irish political leaders at the time for a referendum. Charlie Hawhey's minority government took the pro-life amendment campaign up on its idea. His government proposed to amend the constitution by adding Article 43.3. Politically, things got a bit messy then. On winning the November 1982 election, Fine Gael's Garrett Fitzgerald promised to follow through with a plan to insert the clause into the constitution. However, on advice from his attorney general that the amendment was ambiguous and unclear, he wanted to change the wording. He lost that vote in the Dáil, so instead of his alternative wording, Fianna Fáil's amendment was put to the people. In an unusual turn of events, Garth Fitzgerald actually campaigned against his own referendum. It is still a rare case of a non-government amendment being put to the people. The Irish public went to the polls on the 7th of September 1983, and 66.9% voted in favour of the amendment. Prior to this, abortion was illegal under a law passed in 1861. Now, this ban was enshrined in the constitution, giving further governments little control on how they legislate for abortion. The first major test for the Eighth Amendment came in January 1992, when a 14-year-old girl saw determination after she was raped. The victim and her parents decided to travel to the UK for an abortion. The family informed the Gardaí of their decision and asked whether the foetus could be tested to provide proof of the paternity of the accused in the rape case. The Gardaí then asked the Director of Public Prosecutions whether such evidence would be admissible in court. The DPP liaised with the Attorney General Harry Whelan. The defendant and her parents travelled to England and arrangements were made for an abortion to take place in London. On the same date, the Attorney General obtained an interim injunction stopping the teenager and her parents from leaving the country or arranging the termination of the pregnancy. Once they were informed of the injunction, the family returned to Ireland. The Attorney General's order was based on Article 43.3 of the Constitution that puts the right of the unborn child's right to life on an equal footing of the mother's right to life. Whelan has since said that he had no choice but to seek the injunction as he had the duty to uphold the Constitution. Justice Declan Costello ruled in the High Court that the right of the life of the unborn child could not be interfered with and that the defendant had to stay in Ireland for the duration of her pregnancy. The case was appealed to the Supreme Court in March. The previous ruling was set aside and the girl was allowed to travel to the United Kingdom. It is understood that she suffered a miscarriage at a hospital in England following the hearing. The ruling sparked months of protests. Many argued the amendment's absolute restrictions had gone too far. Others fought to keep the amendment intact and to actually reverse the Supreme Court ruling. As a result of the Supreme Court ruling and the protests, the government put forward three amendments to the public in a referendum in November 1992. The freedom to travel outside of the state for an abortion was passed, as was the freedom to obtain or provide information on abortion services. Both of these are now included in Bunrock na Heron. The public rejected the suggestion that the threat of suicide was not sufficient grounds for an abortion. That means the public agreed with the Supreme Court ruling that a girl or woman who was suicidal as a result of a pregnancy should be allowed a lawful termination. However, no legislation was enacted at the time to reflect this or the Supreme Court ruling. Politically, the intervening years saw the abortion debate largely stay on the sidelines. However, legal cases did arise in our courts. Just five years after the X case, a similar situation arose when a 13-year-old girl, who became known as Miss C, became pregnant after being raped. The Eastern Health Board was granted an order to allow for an abortion abroad, but this was challenged by Miss C's parents. 
The High Court found that she was entitled to a lawful abortion here on the grounds that her life was at risk because she was suicidal and that risk would increase as her pregnancy advanced. Despite being legally granted an abortion in Ireland, the Health Board brought Miss C to the UK for the termination. In 2002, the Irish public voted again on the Supreme Court's X case ruling. The amendment, if it had passed, would have banned abortion on suicide grounds and introduced new penalties of up to 12 years in prison for anyone who performed an unlawful abortion. It was rejected. Since the turn of the millennium, there have also been the Miss A, Miss B, Miss C and Miss D cases. However, it was a tragedy in 2012, along with the sustained pressure from repeal campaigners on politicians, which eventually led to new laws. Savita Halapanavar died in a hospital in Galway in October 2012. She was 17 weeks pregnant but suffering a miscarriage. She died of septicemia. However, the details of her case led to the largest public outcry against Ireland's abortion laws in years. The resulting protests, sit-ins and campaigns, coupled with the European Court of Human Rights finding that Ireland's abortion laws were in breach of the Convention on Human Rights, the government found the need to legislate for the X case. Eventually, the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act was signed into law, which allowed for abortion in still very limited circumstances. Although that did not take the issue completely off the table, the Fine Gael Labour government had largely decided that repealing the 8th should not be tackled just yet in Ireland. Instead, the Citizens' Assembly was established in 2016 to look at key issues in the Constitution. In dealing with the 8th Amendment, the 99 citizens attended meetings over five weekends and recommended that the 8th be replaced or amended, that abortion be allowed without restriction up to 12 weeks, and that the Oireachtas should be free to legislate on terminations. With the Citizens' Assembly's report in hand, an Oireachtas committee was set up to hear evidence from legal and medical experts as well as other stakeholders. It came to the conclusion that laws largely in line with what the Citizens' Assembly had recommended should be brought in. Under its recommendations, terminations would be permitted without restriction to reason up to 12 weeks pregnancy. Legislators explained this was necessary to cover all cases of rape and incest which had formed a key part of the debate in the preceding weeks, as well as ensuring women's safety in light of the easy access to unregulated abortion pills now on the market. Terminations of pregnancy would also be permitted under medical guidance in cases of fatal fetal abnormalities and where there is a risk to the life or serious risk to the health of the mother. The government plans to legislate for these cases if the referendum is passed. And that leads us to where we are today. On the 25th of May 2018, the public will get to vote on whether to repeal or retain the Eighth Amendment. If it is repealed, the clause, provision may be made by law for the regulation of termination of pregnancies will be inserted into the Constitution. If it is rejected, abortion laws will remain the exact same as they are now. As part of the Journal.ie's extensive coverage of the vote on the 25th of May, we're looking for your questions. We want to know what you need to know before going to the ballot boxes. If you do have a question, we will endeavour to answer it with no bias and with as much information as we can before the day of the vote. Please email us on referendum at the journal.ie with any questions you have.